What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Real Estate Podcast. Today, I got a special guest. I know I say that all the time, but the guests didn't even know that they were going to be on the podcast today. I'm supposed to be interviewing my youngest son. He couldn't make it, so I had to come up with a play real fast. And I had thought about this even before this episode. I had thought about interviewing Giovanni uh, just to get a little insight, you know, on you know, his story up until this point, uh, how he uh, got here in Cleveland. Because most of the time, when you look at podcasts, you don't see the before. Most of the time, you just see the after. But I think it will be super interesting to see the before, like to see before Giovanni goes to put in work, right? Because y'all always asking about. Receipts, right? Y'all only believe people when they post receipts. So we're going to do a before and after. So my youngest mentee, newest mentee, Giovanni. So introduce yourself. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm Giovanni, or Gio. Uh, I'm from Vegas. And uh, I drove all the way down here, 30 hour drive uh, to Cleveland. All right, so let's, re let's rewind it a little bit. A few weeks ago at the Cleveland Infield Trainer, yes, sir. Um, before that, how did you how did you find me? Uh, how, did, how did you find me? Well, actually, you kept popping up on my Instagram, and you kept just popping up, and you know what I'm saying. I was I was tuning in here and there, and then I really tuned in when you was talking about losing everything. You were going to your pickup truck to the club. Mm -hmm. And everything that you were doing, I were doing, talk, look, talking about looking rich and not being rich, driving a, a fancy car, you can't afford it. Everything that you were talking about, I had did it already. So your lifeline matched up with mine. You know what I'm saying? I was working at the gas company, driving a pickup truck to, to places that I wasn't supposed to be driving, like, you know, the mall and everything like that. So everything that you were saying aligned with my life. How old are you? Because we, we skipped that part. I know I said my youngest mentee. How old are you? I just turned 22. 22. Yes, sir. Okay, so when, so you was following me on social media. You said uh, the things I were talking about, it kind of aligned with where, what you were going through or experiencing yeah. at the time. What made you buy a ticket to come to the Cleveland Infield training? The tickets are $1,000. Like, like, what made you do that? You 20... 21, right? And you just turned 22. What made you spend a thousand dollars to get some information or to learn real estate? What was what was that thought process? Well, the thought process really wasn't a thought process. Um, before I bought the ticket, I fasted for three days because mm -hmm. God was telling me that I needed to change in my life, and He knew that a nine to five was not for me. So I fasted for three days and to get answers from God. And God told me that I need to be uncomfortable to get comfortable. And it was out of, it was out of trucking or going to be real estate. And I ran across you and I bought the ticket on faith. And, uh, you know, everything just aligned right. Um, you know, that's what led me here. Uh, like I said, it was God telling me to buy the ticket because he was going to tell me this is going to be the God that's going to show you the path. And you're going to change your life by following him and listening to him. So, yeah. All right. So you bought the ticket for $1,000. And, you know, I keep repeating that because it's people that know me, that grew up with me. They watch me from the streets make the transition to real estate. They watch me flip a, a bunch of homes. They watch my kids flip properties and buy properties. And they still question them. <laughs> Should they pay me $1,000? to teach them real estate, to teach them something could change their bank account, help them change their kids' life. And you have a 22-year-old from Las Vegas that don't know me, went in his pocket and invested $1,000 in himself to come to Cleveland and to possibly get some information that could change his life. That's, uh, that's huge. That's huge. Like most people don't, most people don't do that. So now we passed that part. The other part was he drove 30 hours in his car. 
with his clothes in his car. Like that's, like I never did that one before. Like explain the thought process behind you getting in your car driving 30 hours. Like, cause most, of, most 21 year olds, 22 year olds, like they partying, feeling like they got time to figure it out, feeling like they got time to waste. So what was the thought process of you, you know, getting in your car driving 30 hours? The thought process was, Literally, the day before I put in a notice that said I'm leaving, that I'm done, and my boss told me, uh, you know, you can go ahead and go, if we got a spot for you when you come back, you know, you can come back. I already knew my mind I wasn't coming back. Uh, I got an oil change in my car, I knew I was driving down here, everything to be prepared, got my tires changed, and, you know, I just, it. the bags was, I knew I probably wasn't coming back, to be honest with you, and like I said, God told me, that I seen the visions what I was supposed to do. Maybe sleeping in the car some nights. Figuring out where I'm going to sleep at. Um, I, bought my, my, I bought my trash bags because I may need to wash my clothes at the laundry room. It may be sometimes that, you know, um, you know, I need to wash my clothes or whatever I need to do. And I packed everything I needed to to survive. And I came out here with a lump sum of money to survive. So that's how I got the trash bags, my shoes, everything I needed to do to survive. You know what I mean? To make it through. Yep. Uh, back in Vegas, did you live with your mom? Or yeah, your dad? yeah, I live with my mom. Yep, in Vegas, yep. How did your mom feel about her, you know, her, her baby? Because I know she probably said, if how, how did your mom feel about her baby traveling 30 hours to connect with a, a guy that he don't know? Well, she was kind of iffy on it because, you know, we, it was a situation in the previous past, you know what I'm saying? That I can't go on to if we want to take it there, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we got time. Okay, uh, so you know, I can take it back. Um, we had owned two businesses in Phoenix, Arizona, and that's when I actually started touching a little bit of money. I was making like you know, like six thousand, seven thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. and my mom, you know, she was making over that, you know. And so at twenty one, you was making six, seven thousand dollars a month. Yeah, twenty one. Yep, yeah. and. Uh, she had moved to Phoenix and started a business out there and she presented me with a company to start my own business with mental health. And uh, you know, I stacked up a lot of money. I had about, I'd say $35,000 saved up for me just stacking up money. Uh, and uh, I had run across a guy uh, at the mall and me, I'm the type of person, if you have what I want, I'm gonna ask you because I want those things no matter how I can get there and if you can show me. That's all I was looking for was a mentor, somebody to guide me. Because, you know, in my family, I never had nobody really tell me on guidance. You know, I got my mom and my dad sometimes to tell me what I need to do, but all I had was my mom to teach me everything. And, uh, yeah, uh, I met somebody at the mall, a mentor, he was driving a Rolls Royce, and I seen his Instagram on the back of his truck, and I just followed him, and everything that he had that I wanted, and I texted him, I said, he be my mentor. You know, I want to learn everything. Uh, so I met up with him a couple of days later, and I pulled out $20,000 on my bank account to give him because he said he had a, disp a dispensary, which my, I don't smoke, I just went, was, my mom was so messed up, I didn't even know his, his first name, his last name, I just seen what he had. So mm -hmm. for, for the people out here that don't do that, <laughs> but I just seen what he had, and I wanted everything he had, and he had a dispensary, and he said I could make a, uh, $40,000 in uh, four days. So, you know, uh, I went with him to California to check out his a dispensary. And my, my gut was telling me, my stomach was telling me this isn't right. And I knew it wasn't right, but I was just focused on the money. Something that you don't even be focused on. I was focused on the money. And in uh, and four, and four days, I got the $40,000. I did get that. But in, in another four days, he said, do you want $200,000 in four days? I said, yeah, let's do it. And, and God was telling me, what are you doing? This is this is this is the devil. And I was listening to the devil, man. And uh, uh, in the four days, I didn't get the money. The guy stopped answering the phone. My mom invested to him because whatever my mom seeing me, she knows it's a reflection of her. So she invested some money into this man as well. And then I never heard, I never seen him again. Uh, I lost everything. Uh, he messed up my credit. Uh, I lost my money, I went all the way back to zero. My mom, uh, something went wrong with the business. She lost her business as well. 
and she lost a few hundred thousand, even though she stacked up. So she lost a, few, a little bit of her money. And I went back to zero and I felt sick. I couldn't even go to sleep. I didn't want to talk to nobody. And uh, yeah, I was, I was thawing up. You know, uh, we had going back to zero and I had to make a decision either it was going to be the streets or it was going to be uh, a job. And I chose a job because I didn't want that pressure on my back being in the streets and being praying all the time, even though you still gotta watch us around us. But, and that was my decision. You know, I lost everything, went back to zero and I had to wake up and had to get a job, something that I didn't want to do in life. Uh, I had to get a job and I had to wake up and do, do something that I didn't want to do. And after that, that's what got me here. Wow, wow. Hey, first of all, I gotta congratulate you for not taking the street route. That's huge, that's huge, huge. Cause it's so easy to go to the streets. Like we don't really think about like all the things that can happen, like in the streets where we never make it back, prison, dying, and it, it, it it's so easy. Like I'm gonna get this fast money. So uh, that just shows how you know how strong you are to not go to the streets and, and get a job. Listen, people, it's all right to get a job. Like especially with me and like we have this pride and ego. Uh, that, you know, we, 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 we want to fit in, we want to appear a certain way, like, it makes sense to get a job. I'm telling you firsthand, uh, a lot of people that I was locked up with that got 10 and 20 years, they wish they would have had a job. You could have made the same money at McDonald's 10 or 20 years versus 10 or 20 years in prison. People telling you when to wake up, when to go to sleep, when you're going to eat. It makes sense to get a job. That ain't your last stop. Like, get a job, map out your plan, get better at with your finances, then start to invest in the skill set, and just grow your way through. You don't got to be in a hurry, especially if you're watching social media. Most of that stuff ain't real. Most of the stuff they post on social media is to get the money out of your pocket. They not even doing the thing that they posting. They posting a lifestyle, <laughs> and then they get your money out your pocket so they can continue the lifestyle. Don't be confused by the people on social media. Don't be confused by the people on streets. Don't let people pressure you, pressure you into the streets, into illegal activities that could take you away from your family or may even take your life. So a lot of people make decisions like that uh, consciously to try to bypass the real process uh, don't pay attention to the gut feeling. That's amazing how like God equip us with that 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 thing, that inner uh, intuition, infinite intelligence. Like it tells us. Like when I look at my life, like most of the time when things went wrong, my infinite intelligence told me, "Don't do that. Don't, don't invest that money with that person." And I lost a lot of money like that. And so, but with most people, I like to commend you on that as well for looking in the mirrors, accepting responsibility. Most people don't accept responsibility for being in a position that they don't like. Like, how, like, what did you learn that from? Because, you know, like, I know people now that are 40, 50, 60 years old will not accept responsibility for the life, <laughs> the life that they chose, the decisions that they made. Like, like, where did you, where did you, where did you get that from? Um. Really, I just got involved learning on my mom. I seen the things that she had been through and, you know, seeing what my dad had been through and just seeing my family, a lot of them blame, a lot of my family blame their parents on why they go through the things they go through. And, you know, even being with you, hearing what you got to say, nah, that's not nobody else's fault but theirs, you know what I mean? Right. And where I got it from, like I said, just looking at my family and knowing they blame, they blame their parents on their life decisions. Now nah, it's, it's on you. And me learning that, being around that, I learned that at a young age. And like I told my mom, I told my girlfriend and everything, I said, don't feel bad for me that this happened to me. Listen, don't feel bad. You know what I'm saying? You can help me out, but don't feel bad. This I made this decision. This ain't my mom's fault. I put myself in this decision, so I'm going to get myself out this decision. I'm going to get myself out this hole. Yeah. What keeps you inspired every day? Uh, because something like this could easily make people give up, quit. Like, what keeps you inspired and, and moving forward every day? Um, man, 
just what keeps me inspired every day is knowing where I came from. Uh, you know, grew up on the west side of Las Vegas. Just seeing driving down there, you know, and seeing what the people look like down there and the habits they had, I knew that I didn't want it to be like that. So just picturing that in my head, I know that I don't I don't want to be like that. You know what I mean? And talking to my mom, she guided me through. You know, it get lonely, you know, being out here. But yeah. I wake up motivated every day because I see the things that I want. And being next to you, I know that that's real. You know what I mean? Nobody has a superpower. It's just you put the work you put the work in, so I know it's real. You know, that's what keeps me going. It ain't fake. If, if this don't work, it's because of me. I did something wrong. I mean, maybe I didn't study enough. Right. If I go back home, I'll be a fool. Oh man, yeah. What do you mean if you go back home? You like you So 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 you came with all your clothes in the car to like <laughs> to to to, to uh, uh, did you did you move here? Like what like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um but I said I wasn't leaving until my until I got myself a property. But you know, I like it, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm getting comfortable, I'm, I'm building new relationships, I'm meeting new people that can guide me to where I want to go in life. So, you know, it, it just, you know, whatever God leads me to, but you know, I like it here, you know what I mean? But that was my plan to stay here for a couple months and move around, you know? Okay. Uh, what made you pick real estate as a, a vehicle to uh, position you financially? Why real estate? Because I know it could be the path to freedom. You know, not working a nine to five, uh, and I feel like real estate was that path for me. You know, whatever strategy you choose to do, building your money up, but buying and holding, you can give a residual income, and that would, what that's what interests me. And and that's forever. Once you get that property, you got that property. So mm -hmm. that's what interests me is in real estate. That I man, if I get enough properties, I wouldn't have to work no more. And that's what caught my eye. And and doing the real estate and on the other side of fix and flipping or flipping period or putting it back on the MLS to get a profit is just it's, it's fast money, it's quick money, you know, to, to last you a little bit and then you know that leverage is buying and holding, you know what I'm saying? So we have residual income. That's what I like about it. So at the Cleveland infield training, what stood out to you most about that 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 day at the training? Uh really even though you know it was a you know about a couple hours of information, I listened to what you said even with the zip codes. But everything you said made sense, and if if it worked for you, I know it can work for me. Mm -hmm. So just paying attention and you know kind of figuring out what I want to do, it just made perfect sense. You know, uh, running through the zip codes, different strategies, walking through the properties. You know, he was giving us the keys. You know what I mean to to success. What what real estate strategy stands out to you that you feel like you want to start with or use for your journey in real estate starting out? Well, when I came here, my mom was on fix and flip, but you had kind of put something in my head I really didn't know because you only soak so much up in a small amount of time. Uh, it was the finding a good deal from work or a wholesaler finding a good deal and putting it back on the MLS for uh, a greater profit, a profit. And... Uh, as long as I keep on doing that, I want to just keep my foot on the gas so I can't go no because I'm young, so I'm just do that, keep on doing it, keep on doing it, or fix and flip, just keep on running my money or running my bag up. And then when I'm ready, when I get tired, it's ready to slow down a little bit, I want to start buying and holding. What What would you tell uh, a 21-year-old um, that's, uh, think that they got you know, a whole bunch of time or, you know, they're wasting time. They're not really valuing, you know, uh, life and the opportunities uh, uh, that they could possibly be exposed to. <sighs> Wake up before it's too late. Um, me, you know, the party and all that stuff, that come later. Like, mm -hmm. I'd rather be rich, you know what I'm saying, and wealthy later on than have to suffer right now but have fun. Something I would tell somebody is those things will come later as long as you put the work in. I would say to wake up and, you know, put that stuff last. It's, it's about your priorities and your mindset and your goals, you know. But at some point, we're going to have to wake up because we're going to wake up at 30, 35, 40, however old we is. You know what I mean? we got to wake up at some point and 
it is this ain't just you know the stuff that we want is just not gonna get canon to us. It's not just gonna I thought that for a second. I thought just by looking at it, oh it's just gonna come. It's, it, it don't work like that. So you have to put the work in and that's what people my age, you're gonna have to wake up if you want nice things, you know, if you want a good life. So what should we expect from you in the next year? Like what what, what should we expect from you? Because remember, this is uh this is part one. And most of the time, you know, you don't see people go on podcasts and talk about what they don't do. Uh, so today, uh, this podcast is different and uh, we're going to be doing a follow up. So what should the people expect from Giovanni uh, over the next 12 months? Um, you should expect greatness. Me keeping my word. I told myself that I wasn't going to get a haircut until I had $100,000. I haven't had a haircut in six months. So you can expect the haircut. You don't expect uh, a different me, probably a, a brighter me. You know what I mean? I've been through a lot. Uh, I'm gonna keep my word, and everything that I say I was gonna do in this interview, you are gonna see, and it's documented. And if I don't do what I say I was gonna do, he's gonna vouch for it, and I'm gonna look like a fool. I'm a, I'm a fool if I don't say what I said I was gonna do. So you, I'm gonna expect a lot of myself, and uh, and I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. Yeah, appreciate your time. Hey, that's it. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Hey, that part two gonna be fire. I already know it. Like, you can feel it. I can feel it. And you're gonna see it. Peace.